Make no mistake, Power Query and Python and Excel are like chocolate and peanut butter. They are better together. While Excel Power Query is nothing new, let's be completely honest. The vast majority of Microsoft Excel users have never even heard of Power Query, and even fewer actually use Power Query in their daily work. And that's a crying shame because Power Query is extremely powerful. However, I think Power Query is going to be something that's a lot more popular in 2024 because of Python and Excel due to the following five words the Microsoft Excel data scientist. Yeah, 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 you heard that correctly. I'm expecting some hater comments as a result of me saying that. With the combination of SQL, Power Query, and Python and Excel, Microsoft Excel is actually now realistically a full data science stack. It is a technology solution that is applicable to a huge number of real world data science and data analysis scenarios. To prove this to you, I am going to demonstrate a real world scenario. I'm gonna pull around 330,000 rows of data out of a database into Power Query and then feed that into Python to Excel. That'll get pushed up to the Microsoft Cloud. It'll chunk around for a little bit and come back down. And then we can do some cool things with it like running some data visualizations on the data set. So I'm gonna admit this is a pretty cool video. I'm pretty excited about it. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I need to do is level set you on the environment. So I'm recording this video on a Dell laptop and it's about three to four years old now. It has 16 gigs of RAM, reasonable processor. It's connected to the internet using a decent but not spectacular internet connection. And the reason why this is important is because of this. Python and Excel code actually doesn't run locally in your Excel workbook. It actually runs in Microsoft's Azure cloud, which means you have to move the data up from your local workbook to the cloud, let it run there and get the results back. At the time of this video recording, you can only move 100 megabytes of data from your workbook to Python and Excel and back. So one of the first things that we need to do is estimate about how big our data set's going to be to make sure that it fits within that constraint. So what I'm gonna do here is show you one way to do this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to data and we're gonna go over here to get data. And there are so many options in Power Query for sourcing data. It's one of the things that makes it awesome. By the way, anything that you can source from Power Query, you can push into Python and Excel. But in terms of analytics, the single most useful thing is likely to be from a database because most valuable data is stored in databases. I have SQL Server running locally on my laptop, so I'm gonna say from SQL Server, and I'm gonna fire that up. And what I'm gonna do here is say, hey, look, my database is running locally on my local host, and it's in a database called Python in Excel. And I'm gonna open up the advanced options here, and I'm going to go ahead and paste in some SQL. So I got my SQL, and look what I'm doing here. I'm using Microsoft SQL Server, and the variant of SQL supported by SQL Server allows you to do something called top 1000. It essentially allows you just to grab 1000 rows of data. And this is a one way to estimate how big your entire set of data is going to be to see if it's gonna fit within that 100 megabyte limitation. So what I'm gonna do is say, okay, cool. I'm gonna just pick the top 1000 rows and I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And that's gonna run and it's gonna show you some data here. Now this is a data set that represents flights that took off from New York City airports. It's got about 336,000 rows of data total and it's got varying kinds of data. It's got numeric data, it's got string or text data and it's got date time data. So it's a reasonable data set to play around with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, look, I wanna load this to, I wanna go load to, and I'm gonna select only create a connection because that's all I need. I just need Power Query to set up the connection and then I will leverage this connection in my Python and Excel code. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And I get back my query and I don't like this name. So I'm gonna go ahead and click, right click on it and select rename here. And I'm gonna call this top 1000 flights. Now what's cool is that I can go ahead and close this down and actually use that connection name in my Python and Excel code. So how I get started in Python and Excel is I use the new PY function, so equals PY, and as soon as I hit open parenthesis, I get Python mode. And what I'll do here is paste in some code to leverage that connection so that we can take a look at the first thousand rows and estimate how big they are. Okay, now you can see my code here, which says, look, I'm gonna load a pandas data frame from SQL Server via Power Query. A data frame is nothing more than the way Python represents an entire table of data. And what we can see here is I'm using the brand new Excel function. The Excel function is your gateway into your workbook data. And all I need to do is just pass it in 
the name of my query. What will happen is behind the scenes, the Excel function will look through all the named entities in your workbook, tables and name ranges and Power Query connections. It will find that top 1000 flights is available and it will then load that into a data frame called flights. So what'll happen is Power Query will reach out to my local SQL server, run the query, get the data, push it up to the Azure cloud, bring it back. And then what we'll do is we'll get the information about the data frame. And the information will include how much memory, how big are the 1000 rows. And then we can use that to estimate our overall size of our data frame. So to run this code, I just hit control enter. And this will take a second to run, not surprisingly. And we get back information in the diagnostics pane. And if I scroll down, what we can see here is my memory usage is about 66, about 67 kilobytes. So this is not gonna be a problem. I can pull all the data in because 1000 rows is this, 300,000 rows is about 300 times that, and that's well below the 100 megabyte limit. So I'm good to go. So what I'll do now is I'll create a new connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new connection from SQL Server. And once again, it's localhost and my database is called Python and Excel. And what I'll do here is put in my SQL. And this time I will use the same SQL, but I'll remove the top 1000. Okay, you can see here I have my code and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the top 1000 here because I don't need that anymore. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And then I'm gonna to go to load two. And then I'm gonna say only create a connection, click okay. And I get my new query here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename it. And I'm gonna call this one just flights DB. So that tells me that I'm pulling all the records. Just a naming convention. You can name your queries whatever you would like. Now that I've got this query set, this connection set up, I can run some Python code just like we saw before, but with a different connection name to pull all the data. Now here's the problem. By default, Python and Excel is set up to run every single Python cell code every single time. And that gets kind of boring and <laughs> annoying to be quite frank. So what we want to do is we want to turn that off. So how we do that is we go up to formulas, and we go over to calculation options. Notice that's on automatic, that's the default. That means that every Python cell is executed every single time. So I'm gonna move this to manual. And that means that only the current cell, the current Python formula that I wanna run will get executed. Okay, so we're cool there. So I'm gonna go ahead and load all the data now. So equals PY, open parenthesis, and I'll paste in my code here. And you can see here, I'm now using the FlightsDB connection. So this is gonna pull in about 336,000 rows of data, and it's gonna push it up to the Microsoft Cloud, run it, and then bring it back, and then cache it locally. This is gonna take a little bit of time to run. I'm not gonna let you just sit and watch the video, but what I'll do is I'll start timing it for you so that you know exactly how long it runs, even though I'll do a cut scene here. Okay, so we're back, and what we can see here is that we have, in our diagnostics pane, 336,776 entries. That's the number of rows. And that took about 30 seconds, a little less than 30 seconds. So that's not bad. So what this tells you is that for so many scenarios, Python and Excel will scale pretty well. As long as you got a decent machine and a decent internet connection, you can move data up to the Microsoft Cloud, like 336,000 rows, for example. And what we can see here at the very bottom is that my data frame is around 21.8 megabytes. So I'm like well within the 100 megabyte limit, which gives you some indication that you can push quite a bit of data up to Python and Excel in, in the Azure cloud. But what's really interesting is now that we've got the data, let's go ahead and do something with it. So I can show you the performance, for example, of doing a data visualization. So one of the things that we can do is use the Seaborn library, which comes out of the box with Python and Excel. And it is a great way to create nice, powerful data visualizations. So I'm gonna go ahead and say equals PY, open exclamation point, and then I'm gonna copy some code into here, paste some code into the cell. And you can see here, I'm importing the Seaborn library as SNS, and I'm gonna create something called a count plot. In Seaborn, a count plot essentially is a bar chart where you're counting up individual values. Typically what you're doing here is you're using some sort of categorical data. So for example, I'm using my new flights data frame here, which is now all 336,000 rows of data, and I'm saying, look, create a bar chart counting up how many flights took off from each of the three New York City airports in the data set. So if I run this code, I'm gonna get back a Python object. That's not really what I want. I actually wanna see the visual inside of Excel. So what I do is I switch over to an Excel value and that reruns the cell. And you can see here, I get a little chart. Now, one of the easiest ways to see the chart much larger is to right click on it, go to picture and cell, and create a reference. And that shows you the image in a much larger form. 
So usually what I end up doing most of the time is bring up the cell like this, the image like this, look at it. And then when I'm done, I hit control Z to put it back. So what we can see here is the count plot. Once again, let me make that a little bit bigger. And what it's showing us is, this is Newark, this is LaGuardia, and this is JFK. You know, they're all about the same. I mean, there's a little variations in the total number of flights that took off from each airport, but in general, they're all around the same. They're pretty equally distributed. Now, another thing that we can do is we can create histograms. If you remember histograms from your statistics class, if your experience was anything like mine, you were like, oh, histograms, I'm not sure how they're actually useful. Turns out in the real world, they're super, super useful. Let me show you a reason. Let me show you an example of why. So we're gonna go ahead and go to this cell equals PY. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paste in some code, make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Paste it in. And here's what I'm doing. I'm creating a histogram of the from the flight's data frame. And what I'm looking at is the distance. Okay, the distance, which is how far did the plane travel? It took off from a New York City airport. How many miles did it fly to get to its destination? And what I'm doing is I'm saying, look, create a histogram of distance, but create one for each unique value of origin. And then what I'm doing is I'm setting my buckets to be about 500 miles wide. So flights from zero to 500 miles will be in one bucket, 500 to 1,000 miles will be in another bucket, so on and so forth. So if I run this code by hitting Control Enter, I get back a nice histogram, but I need to switch it over to an Excel value once again, runs the code. And then what I can do here is let me scooch this up and then picture and cell, create a reference. And then you can see here a very useful visualization which shows you, for example, that typically speaking, the planes that are taking, from LaGuard taking off from LaGuardia, 2,000 miles or shorter. And notice here, JFK, we have a lot more flights that are over 2,000 miles, including some that are very, very far, which would be potentially interesting to say, well, where are these flights going? Why are they so far? And then Newark is somewhere in between LaGuardia and JFK. So this is an example of how you can conduct powerful visual data analyses using Python and Excel. And in many cases, you can create visualizations in Python and Excel that are just not possible to do with out-of-the-box Excel charts. Now, this is a very simple demonstration. I loaded up a big data set. I created some visualizations. However, if you check out some of my other Python and Excel videos on my channel, you would use the same technique for even more advanced analytics. For example, things like building machine learning models, performing logistic regression analyses, or doing a cluster analysis. There you have it, a quick demonstration of how Power Query and Python and Excel are better together. I've created this video to demonstrate the true power, the true potential of Python and Excel, but I'll be the first to admit that Python and Excel isn't for everyone. Python and Excel is designed for professionals that want to differentiate themselves at work by providing new and powerful insights that just aren't possible with out-of-the-box Excel. To continue my content on Python and Excel, my next video is going to address a common question that I get. Should I learn VBA, Visual Basic for Applications, or should I learn Python and Excel? And in the next video, I will answer this question. When that video is ready, I'll put a tile here on the screen for you so you can just click it so you can see that video. And in the meantime, I'll put up another one of my Python and Excel videos that I think you might enjoy. Okay, that's it. Until next time, please stay healthy, and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.